Hey everybody, welcome back. As promised, this is part four, the final part of the boat floor redo or boat floor replacement series on this channel. As you saw in the last video, it's totally done. So let's talk about some of the things that didn't make it into the three part series. Okay everybody, welcome back. As you could hear from that little quick intro there, uh, this video is just to kind of talk about some of the things that didn't make it into the three-part series, uh, some of the more tedious things that I just didn't feel were extremely necessary to get the point across for the actual floor redo. Some things that the floor affected. Um, if you're wanting to see an actual like how-to process of how I went about replacing this floor, go ahead and check out the previous videos. They will be in the description section at the bottom of this video, and uh, as well as some links with other products that I used, etc. All right, so let's see how the floor turned out. Okay, so some of the things that didn't make it into the three-part main series, um, like I said, were tedious things, and one of them was the fact that the rear engine cover, that had to be altered because the way I redid the floor, I put a new piece on top of the old floor. Well, that raises everything up a little bit and I did think this was gonna happen. Well, I'll just show you. So what happened was I had to push this cushion back and that's why you can see that bracket there, which I have a plan, I'm gonna put a piece of wood and either paint it white or stain it to uh, match the floor. And then those brackets will be hidden. This slides out into a table anyway, so it didn't mess with any of the functionality. The reason I had to do that was because with this pushed all the way back, there was a lip back here that this cover that lifts up sat on, and it was causing the cover to sit extremely high. Um, and that was a problem because these covers right here where there's storage, um, they weren't sitting flush anymore, which would cause this panel back here to warp whenever you'd step on it, which is a problem because you're constantly in and out of the boat when you are skiing or wakeboarding, etc. So I'm gonna pull this out in an attempt to uh, try to show you what I'm talking about. So instead of there being a lip here, there used to be a little ledge that this would rest on. Now it's just flush. All I had to do was take some screws off from under here and push everything back. Hey, real quick, everybody. Uh, while I'm talking about the boat here, if you enjoy this content or you liked following this three-part series, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It is really the only way that this channel can grow into something even greater. And uh, I really appreciate every subscribe button hit I get. Also, hit that like button. Um, sorry if this video is a lot of talking. That's not normally what it is. Usually there's a lot of working on stuff, repairing things. Uh, explaining how things work sometimes there's some reviews etc so hopefully you'll come back for more okay let's continue talking about how good of a job i did so another thing that really didn't make it into the videos other than just saying i was going to put it in was the fact that i totally put a different seat in i put more of a fishing style seat in i wanted to be able to get in and out of it a lot easier than the wraparound seat that this boat came standard with uh, just personal preference and this seat happens to fold down enough talking i'll just show you the seat here so it is a seat from cabela's i ordered it shipped directly to my house and uh, there is the adjustable pedestal all you have to do is unthread this right here it pulls out and then you move it up 
line it up with the new hole, put it in, thread it in, voila, you have a higher or lower seat. Now some modifications I did to this seat. There's no cup holders on this side of the boat. So I put one of these kind of gimbal style beverage holders on the side of the seat with a couple stainless steel self tappers and this can come right off if I want to. Go ahead and move to the back and you have this Plano pouch that I also found at Cabela's in the store. Um, I didn't have any storage options on this new seat so this was my solution for that. I attached it with snaps lots of storage it is somewhat weatherproof also but the beauty part about how I attached this was it can come right off so say you are boating with your friends and you throw all your stuff in this in this back pouch on the boat seat like we always do uh, now you can take it right off and bring it in with you if you go into a place to eat or you go to the beach to swim and you walk away from your boat, etc. I think it turned out super nice. So just like everybody's project, there's always something about the final outcome that you just aren't happy about. So this is one of the things I'm not happy with and I have some extra and I may fix it. So right here where the ski locker is, it's kind of a jagged edge. One of the reasons is this is the actual cutout from this side of the floor. So I actually cut it out, as you can see in the previous videos, took it out and then glued it back onto the ski locker door. Now what I wish I would have done was cut another piece because what I did on the edges was wrapped it around and it turned out really good and I just air stapled it. Well on these sides, there wasn't enough material to do that. So you end up with a kind of a hard edge like that that could ultimately peel up in the future and it makes a door kind of fit a little loose where that way isn't as loose and this way is one of the other things i'm not super happy about is some of the gapping that was left over when i did the floor and some of that could have been avoided had i went up actually on the edge of the hull of the boat instead of going flush with the plywood and I will show you what I mean here. So here's what I mean by that. There was a pretty large gap and I wanted it as sealed as possible so I filled it in with silicone and you can see it ends up right about there. I do highly recommend going around the entire edge with silicone though. It's ultimately only going to help you seal the boat up and I found that it helps glue the edge of the flooring down. So let's do a price breakdown of what I spent to repair this floor without having to rip the entire boat apart. Then let's compare what it would cost to rip the entire floor apart and undoubtedly have to rip the engine out to go right down to the hull like it's supposed to be fixed do a comparison and then I'll explain why one more time I decided to do it this way. Okay, here I have a breakdown of exactly what it cost me to do the floor the way I did it. Go ahead and pause it if you want a breakdown of every single thing. I would also like to note that I used pressure treated plywood. A lot of people actually don't realize that marine grade plywood is not treated and is fairly prone to rotting. Also, take note of the price difference for treated plywood versus marine grade plywood. It's pretty crazy. So, the way I did the project, the total is $420.94. So that's what it cost me to do the floor the way I did it. Now let's see what it would have cost to do the floor the quote-unquote correct way. Okay, again, pause this screen if you want to look at every single price breakdown. Also, quick disclaimer here, these prices could vary depending on the size of the boat or the project. There's always things that could come up that end up costing you more money, like needing more materials, etc. Also, at the top of my little type out there, I wanted to point out that 
it would be a lot more work. You would have to remove the entire floor, including the stringers and all your seating, possibly remove the engine depending on what you're replacing, lots of grinding and cleanup. So with my quick figuring as to what I would have needed for my boat, the total to do it the quote unquote correct way would have cost me somewhere in the ballpark of $1,300. $31. So I would say that is a pretty huge price difference. Also, like I said, take a look at that plywood cost difference. Pretty crazy. So that's what it would have cost to do it by removing the entire floor. Not only would it have cost way more, I would have had to remove all my seating, probably had to do a lot of fiberglass work as well. And the boat floor just really wasn't, the floor was bad, the actual flooring. But the core of the boat really isn't that bad. Really the only big thing was that one stringer running this way tight against this seat. And I kind of repaired that anyways with that epoxy that I found. And it really did. It That stuff makes the wood hard and fairly waterproof. Another question that may arise or comment on my previous videos is aren't you worried about extra weight honestly i don't think i added that much weight i maybe added the weight of a child a small child like maybe 40 extra pounds that's really not that much more weight um and when you think about weight in a boat you're actually supposed to weigh all your gear along with the persons coming onto a boat how many people actually weigh all their gear before going out boating? I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but how many people actually do? Do you weigh your anchor? Do you weigh all your fishing gear? Do you weigh all your sporting equipment that you're bringing out with you, like your tubes, your skis, wakeboards, etc.? I bet you don't. Long story short, I'm not worried about the extra weight. I don't think it's going to make a bit of difference. Aside from the plywood, which is the bulk of the weight, Nothing else I put in here is really going to make a difference. Weight is not a concern to me. If it's a concern to you, maybe this isn't the route for you. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. This was a super informal video. I just wanted to go over some of the things that didn't make it into the main three videos of the actual repairs and uh, just kind of touch base on some of the things that you should consider if you're going to do the floor the way I did it. Also kind of reiterating that I do know that this is not the proper way to fix a boat floor and explaining why I did it the way I did it. If you're just finding me for the first time and you made it to the end of this video, I want you to know that this is not how every video is. Uh, and I highly recommend you go back and watch those three previous videos. Again, everything will be linked down in the description section of this video, along with materials I used for the entire process and a total cost of what it took me to get this project done. Thank you again so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you and I will see you in the next video.